with everything becoming global, understanding and building products that cater to all becomes imperative, wherein the role of internationalization and localization testing comes at the front. Through this video, let us understand nuances of such type of testing and its importance in this day and age. The areas to be covered under this video will be the need and the purpose of internationalization and localization testing, the definitions of G11N, I18N and L10N, understanding Unicode, the G11N testing approach for global products, internationalization testing which will cover enablement testing and localizability testing and finally localization testing which will cover functional testing and linguistic testing of a product. First, let us understand the need and purpose of internationalization and localization testing. English, although considered to be the universal language, is still not spoken by two-thirds of the world's population. Therefore, to make a product usable by all, that is around the globe, it becomes imperative that it supports more than just one language. This then increases the need of globalized product that supports various languages with various regional standards. When we talk about globalization, we essentially refer to it as a combination of internationalization, localization and culturalization in making an application independent with respect to any specific region or culture here is an engineering structure of any product which needs to be globalized let's now delve deeper into what internationalization and localization stand for in internationalization we generalize the product so that it can handle multiple language without any major changes in its design generally referred to as I18N, the abbreviation includes the 18 characters in between L and N of internationalization. On the other hand, localization is the process of adapting a product or service to a particular language, referred to as L10N. To make encoding efficient and characters unique, the Unicode standard has emerged as the character encoding format which is used worldwide. It provides a unique number for every character independent of its platform, program or language, thus supporting global exchange of information in various languages. It has also been adopted by many players in the industry like Apple, HP, Microsoft, etc. Thus, when we talk about G11N testing approach for global products, it is done in two phases. In the first phase, an application is tested before translation, wherein internationalization covers the enablement and localizability testing before sending it to be tested for localization. In the second phase, an application is tested after translation, wherein localization covers the functional and linguistic aspects of an application, which will be covered in details later in this video. Coming on to internationalization testing. It consists of two types, the first being enablement testing. Herein, we basically test the application by putting the localized test data in all input fields followed by analyzing the output to make sure that the application handles all type of localized characters without any corruption. A number of scenarios are then covered under enablement testing, whether it be related to the GUI, data import and export, unit of measurements, etc. For example, in this scenario, enablement testing is performed to check the question marks and boxes that appear instead of localized characters due to the font rendering. Another example of enablement is when question marks appear instead of the localized characters due to the problem in Unicode to code page conversion. Sometimes it may even happen that junk characters appear instead of actual localized characters due to the use of wrong code page. The second type of testing under internationalization is localizability or pseudo localization testing. In this, we check that there should not be any hard coded string in the application. That is, all strings should be externalized. This testing also helps us in checking the localization suitability of the product before UI translation. 
The purpose to perform localization testing is to find the hard-coded strings in the UI. During externalization, there might be a chance that some strings may have been left. So, if the strings is not externalized in this resource file, it implies that it didn't go further for translation. One may come across certain functional issues as well, wherein to ensure that an application can be installed on the corresponding OS as well as the acceptance sanity test cases pass flawlessly becomes imperative. Also, via pseudo localization, there is a chance to identify potential aesthetic UI bugs early on and fix them before translation ever starts. Now, we come to understanding the way localizability testing is done, wherein mock builds are used to manipulate the linguistic resources of an application to reflect language or locale specifics followed by a build and then the runtime testing. These pseudo-localized builds are created by externalization of strings into a resource file, wherein the developer separates code from the translatable content. The strings separated from the code are then externalized into resource files. This is followed by pseudo-translation, wherein resources are modified by adding, leading or trailing mock characters of the target language to reflect locale-specific characteristics. Finally, the pseudo-localized builds are created using pseudo-localized strings for each language or locale. These builds are made available early in the development cycle before sending out the strings for translation to the linguist. After covering the entire ecosystem of internationalization, we come to localization testing performed after translation, which has two types, the first being functional testing. Herein, the objective is to ensure that all features of an application work seamlessly on the localized OS. The next type is linguistic testing, wherein it is ensured that the content is not mistranslated or miscontextualized and even the UI issues are covered. This then becomes a collaborative effort of the functional QA engineers and the linguistic experts. Herein, it becomes evident how different locales have different nuances which need to be taken into consideration while conducting localization testing to ensure that an application is usable by all. Such testing is bound to get some challenges on the way to make a product global which may include finding the right set of engineers with the right set of domain expertise or even the cumbersome linguistic processes which calls out for a careful testing process etc. But to overcome such challenges there are some best practices that can be adopted such as ensuring that all functionalities work fine on the localized OS, sorting file folder accessibility or text searching works properly, support of 2-byte and 4-byte characters, date, time, calendar, currency format should be supported, ensuring the use of localized username and password or a localized keyboard during testing and many more. With such practice in hand, the localization test effort will not just be successful, but effective as well. We hope that you learned a little something from our video on making accessibility your priority. To keep on exploring on the same, log on to our site www.qainfotech.com. Thank you.